come before your throne. We enter in with you, Father. We enter in in the fullness of the glory of Yeshua. And Father, from this moment on, I ask my King that you would take every single one in this class on a journey. Those on Facebook, those on YouTube, Lord, take us on a journey deep into your presence, deep into the kingdom of heaven where you have opened up the gateways and the doorways through your blood, through the fullness of what Yeshua did on the cross for your sons and your daughters to open us up, to be able to go in and grow and mature so that we can take back our authority, we can take back the high places, we can take back all that the enemy has taken. Re-establish the prince of roaring angels on the mountains. Re-establish sons in the place of governance. To come into creation through the blueprints of heaven. And to re-establish that which needs to be done. That which needs to, that which needs to come into full fruition according to the promises made. I ask, Father, that as we answer the call of creation, that you'll open our hearts up to be trained and equipped to shift, to go higher, deeper, wider in you. Tonight, Father, I ask you all, help us understand what it means to activate our imaginations, to understand what it means to have plumb lines, to go into a open vision where you are revealing and, and, and directing us into a place of revelation to take us deeper into understanding. I pray, Father, that we will begin to open our hearts up for every single anchor, plumb line, that you put in front of us so that we can see the tools that you've given us that we can use to go deeper into your kingdom to understand that which is being revealed to us as sons and, and daughters in this time and season. Father, we love you, we worship you, we magnify you. You are an incredible, phenomenal, mind-blowing God. Everything you do for us is to increase us. Everything that's out there for us is to increase us, to bless us, to shift us, to align us, to propel us, to bring full record. Reconciliation. Take us on a journey to become what we meant to be. Take us on a journey to be reinstated as those in his image and likeness in the full measure of who you are, my King. Open our hearts, open up who we are, and let's grow into everything you have for us. This is to be a new year, 2024, a time to really go into intimacy, to get to know you, to understand you, to know that we only have had a very small portion of you. And your desire for your sons is to go to a deeper place. Tonight we want to do that, Father. We love you. We thank you, my King, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Okay, how you guys doing? Thank you so much, Mr. Connor. Okay. Yeah? She is here? Okay. She's out. Okay, okay. Thank you, Jesus. It's very important. That we look after God's people. Yes. Yes. And I always say this, I do it. I would urge you to do it. Bring a couple of extra dollars with. And bless Gracie with that. Mm -hmm. Mind yourself to do that. I know that you guys do. I've asked it before. Um, you don't have to understand someone's life. Or believe that what they go through or what they're in is right or wrong. You just need to know their heart and their spirit. And that's enough. You know, I never judge a man or a woman according to what someone else told me. I judge a man and a woman according to what I see, Yahweh sees. And that's very important because we are one with each other. That's why we support each other and we love on each other. Doesn't matter what you're going through, where you're at, what your sins are. No matter what you believe that's opposite to me, we serve the same God. We are of the same DNA. We love each other. We honor each other. Okay? Yes, sir. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thank you. So while I'm going to be teaching tonight and you see my lips go red and you think, oh my goodness gracious, he's trance. <laughs> Calm down. I cut my lip. It's not lipstick. It's blood. It does not want to stop bleeding. I have tried everything. Now, first of all, how the hell... Does anybody cut their lip while they're shaving? I don't know exactly how I did it. It annoys me excessively. What I'm going to try and do tonight is I want to take you on a journey on a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're engaging. And I want to say this because I really believe that this is a year where Yahweh wants to open this revelation to us. You know, it's not something I seek. Like I said last week, it, it enters and it happens by desire. It is what I feel in my heart. 
that I want to shift into it. It's not just about worship, although it's all about worship. It's not about prayer, although it's all about prayer. It's not about the rituals. Um, and I say this, and I want you to understand, but it's not about rituals. It's not about steps. It's not about what you need to do. It's about getting to understand who you are and then worship and prayer and everything that comes in our order, normal Christian order doesn't become religious, but it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a place of honor and respect. It becomes a place that you grow into where you begin to realize my relationship with Yahweh is not meant to be a religious act. Right. It's not so that I can just have my fire insurance and I just do a bunch of things so he's okay with me and he's pleased with me. Right. This is a, a being that wants to be one with you. Lord. A being that wants to get so intimate that he wants to be the head so you can be the body. Yes. A being that desires so much for you to be part of who he is that he sent his, his being into creation to die on a cross. And, and I don't say, you know, we say... Crucifixion, I, I don't want to take you through the whole spiel, and you should know this by now, but I'm sure it's been preached a million. Um, I think my tissue got raptured. Never mind, it's my back. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, that you was going to teach about crucifixion. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying to you guys, pay attention. <laughs> so we need to understand something, you know, there's... There's a level that Yahweh wants to shift us into. There's a desire that He has for a company of people to have a revelation of a dimension that He's opened up through the blood. A place that we go into. Uh, a life that we can live. An authority that we carry. Right. And it's a lifestyle that we need to open up for ourselves. It's not religious. It's not something I have to do. Right. It is a covenant with a living God that, that gave Himself for me. You know, and He didn't just give Himself for me. It wasn't just one little act. It was a restoration decision from out of the Trinity. And I always say this because we don't quite understand that everything happens through a natural perception because everything we've studied and everything we've meditated up to this point has come from a natural, I say natural, I know that it's not natural, but it's come from a physical book that we physically sit down with and we can physically open and we can physically read. And so we've naturally understood that this is all there is. And that's what we've been taught, but we have to understand, when I read this book and it tells me about the Word of God, it's not referring to the Bible. So there's eons of other dimensions of revelation that this book has opened up for me and is referring to that I need to engage. There has to be a way for me to go in. There has to way, be a way for me to understand what is available outside of that which I can physically see. Because what I physically see... What I physically read is for my physical body. Mm -hmm. Why? Because what I believe, I will receive. Yes. So if I'm engaging the Word of God with my, with my soul and my body, what I understand and what I study, what I begin to believe in what I study is going to affect my physical body. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in the same breath, I can meditate and I can read and I can understand the Word of God to a certain measure. Because, but every time I begin to grow, my understanding of what I just read changes. Right. My perception and my view of what I've believed previously shifts. Because we have to begin to understand there's so much more that Yahweh has for us than what we've had up to this point. Yes. Yes. Now I want to remind you that there's plumb lines that Yahweh has given things to give you an understanding of what I'm actually talking about. You know, if you look at Holy Spirit, the Bible says that it is righteousness, joy, peace. And if you look at Yeshua, the Bible tells us it's the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Father, it says it's justice, judgment, and holiness. Mm -hmm. Those are nine dimensions of the Father or Yahweh that we get to go into. Now, first of all, those dimensions are your protection. Let's so think about it. If I step into Holy Spirit, I immediately step into three skins that Satan has to break through to get to me. Then I step into the far up into Yeshua, that is another nine, another three skins. It's now six skins that the enemy has to come through to get to me. Mm. He has to step through my righteousness. He has to step through my joy. He has to step through my peace. He has to step through the dimensions of the word that I've engaged in study, the way, the truth, and the life. He has to break through that dimension that I've stepped into to be like the Father. Now he has to break through justice. He has to break through judgment. He has to break through holiness to get to me. We have to begin to understand that Yahweh through Yeshua on the cross has opened up a gateway, a doorway for us to step into where we begin to live out of. And from out of that place, I live in my tomorrow so that no weapon formed against me can prosper. 
Yes. And I've said this several times, if I live in my tomorrow, I've already seen my tomorrow. Yes. If I live in my tomorrow today, then nothing that happens to me today can take me out because of tomorrow that's already in me. Yes. That's why the Holy Spirit is soon anti lumbanumai. And I say that, and, and, and it's a, a Greek word, and it means uh, to be attached to. So much so, it's almost like a parasite. It's to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, to the top, to the bottom. There's no separation. None. But it's also the ecstatic state of prophecy. It's always also that dimension uh, of my tomorrow. That, that expression of what I need to believe, what I need to see, what I need to understand. Yes. And my God tells me in a prophetic word that I'm going to be a great evangelist. And tomorrow morning I wake up and I'm not a great evangelist. And I have to be able to understand that no one and nothing can take me out of my today. Because I've had to receive something in my tomorrow that still hasn't happened. But I know it will. Yes. Because it's a promise. Yes, that's a promise. So it's almost, it's almost like we have to begin to listen to a different way yes. when it comes to the voice of God. Right. Yes. Because the still small voice has never been good enough. Mm. Now don't misunderstand me, that's what we've been, been holding on to for, for dear life for so many years. But in reality, and don't look at me with that tone, you have more than one voice. Right. Matter of fact, some of us have so many voices, we don't know which one to listen to. Matter of fact, some of us have so many voices that they become our friends. <laughs> Matter of fact, I remember um, one of my friends, I wouldn't go into names because it's a pretty close friend, but I uh, remember getting home one day, and there this person was sitting with the mirror that they take, took off the bathroom in the lounge, talking to themselves. I know it sounds crazy, right? But, where, where was I going with this? I don't know. Tell me. Um, voices. So many voices. Voices, voices, yes, okay. And I remember, I came into the house in late, in the early morning, and I was very confused, and uh, she, they were saying, Byron, I think it was called Byron, and it was, uh, these names of, of these demonic <laughs> entities that um, was communicating with them. And that they could sit in front of the mirror and see all these faces coming through. And that's what I expected, that's what I presumed, because you sit in front of the mirror speaking to yourself. Yep. And this demonic entity that you've been best friends with all your life uh -huh. wants to kill your Christian friends because it's sick of you talking about God. Uh -huh. <laughs> then you get born again. Where do you think those guys go to? Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't look at me with that tone. Oh, well, I've got Jesus. No demon can live in my, in my body. Right. Well, why do we casting demons out of Christians all the time? <laughs> I got punched in the face by a Christian the other day. Yeah. It was my own stupidity. I was being blonde. Sorry if there's blondies in the, in the room. But I would say blonde's not a hairstyle, it's a way of life. Right? <laughs> Don't agree with that. <laughs> but I, I asked this demon, I said, well, you know, you can do whatever you want to me. And she punched me in the face. I'm like, oh man. Don't even say that, stupid fool. Are you still alive? <laughs> she says, yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't punch her back yet. Give me a minute. <laughs> no, it cast all the demons out. But now there's a lot of changes. Anyway, it's, what I'm trying to say is, when we get born again, there's familiar spirits that has not been dealt with. Right. Voices that, that you wouldn't think is demonic. Mm -hmm. Voices that tell you when you walk into church and the pastor doesn't greet you, oh, he doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it could be many different reasons in your head. I, could, I think you might know, you know my sin. You know what I said to, uh, about him the other day to a friend of mine? <laughs> or he just doesn't like me because I've got a, a big nose or I'm, I'm overweight or I'm underweight or my breasts stink or I don't know what the problem is, but there's a, there's a spirit <laughs> telling you that people don't like you because of certain things. Mm. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying all this because Yahweh is calling a company of people to begin to understand, first of all, how to get rid of the familiar spirits, because it's not a demon you cast out. How many understand that? A familiar spirit has the right in your bloodline to speak voices over, to speak over you, and for you to adhere to and listen to, because you haven't dealt with it yet. It could come from your bloodline. And it's very subtle. It's not going to be straight up. Now you have to remind yourself in the same breath, if Satan, now I say Satan, remember he's just one. He's not omnipresent, he's not all-powerful. Okay, so when we say Satan is here, I don't think so. Don't think so. Well, we're pretty important, I know that. <laughs> but he's not here. There might be demonic entities coming to kill, steal, and destroy, 
But Satan himself is not here. And I'm saying these things because we need to understand. If there's powers and principalities and there's rules of the darkness of this age that governs creation, that takes over and that has authority, and we come into play and we begin to take back what belongs to us and we, we begin to realize the authority and the power that we have and that Satan doesn't have the right and that he doesn't have the, the, the power to come against me or to speak against me or to stand against me or to even attack, kill or destroy. It's never been the function or the desire of the Father. As a matter of fact, he said, I come to give life in abundance. So anything that's outside of life in abundance is me having to understand that I need to take my authority. I need to walk in another realm of power and take back what's been stolen from me. Right. It's almost like Yahweh is calling a company of people that will understand, you know, my engagement, the things that opens up in the spirit realm, it's not so that I can look more spiritual. Right. Mm. There's just simply too much for us to do to understand, to have revelation of, to be playing around and, and have church meetings. Yes, yes. And I say that, and it's not, it's not a funny, weird little thing. It's, it's us having to grow into a position where we know who we are. Right. That Yahweh created a people to rampantly doing crazy things. But, but the, the sons have woken. We have begun to change our ways and understanding. So what I want to do quick is I want to look at who the Holy Spirit is. For the kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking, but righteousness and uh, peace, shalom, and joy in Ruach HaKadosh. In the full measure of Holy Spirit, we have to have a revelation of righteousness. You know, when I, when I engage, now I, I'm going to share a couple of engagements, things, things that I love going back into. And now it's changed my life. When I was a young man, I just gave my life to Yeshua. And I remember being upset about something and I was having a fight with Jesus. Not a physical fight. But I remember standing on, um, on the rugby field in South Africa, in my hometown, western area, it's a little mine town. And um, I was screaming and shouting, and I don't know exactly what I was doing, but I said, I want to see you right now. If you were real, I want to see you. <clears throat> I'm sure you guys have done the same thing. <laughs> I remember he appeared right in front of me. On the rugby field, in one specific spot, and I just stood there and I was in amazement. And I shared with you guys previously, I was sitting in front of my mother's dressing table, and um, I changed into him. And when I was on that rugby field, and I was looking at this man standing in front of me in the spirit, something in me changed. And when I started getting these revelations, and so far I started teaching me about dividing soul and spirit, and you can go back to all these engagements, I started going back into that specific encounter. Because that's something I wanted revelation of. That's something that I needed to understand. So I go into this encounter, and I'm standing before Yeshua again. It happened many years ago. I'm 48 years old. I got saved when I was 19. So that is a long time ago. Right? About 30 years ago. Right? Yeah, about 29 years ago. And I remember nowadays when I go back in, there's more than just Jesus standing there. Mm. You know, there's an angelic canopy yeah. that is engaging with me. I, every time I go back, there's something else. Yeah. I also realize when I go back, it's not on a rugby field. Mm. I go back, it's Yeshua standing in a courtroom. It's Yeshua standing on the mountain. It's Yeshua in the garden. It's Yeshua in Eden, in paradise. It's basically Yahweh, Yeshua, any place that I want to go into, but I have a plumb line. I have a framework of something that I can focus on with my imagination and then go into. And that has become a door for me. Yes. That has become a, a, at any time I desire to go in, that opens up for me, that aligns me, and that shifts me to go in and to have an encounter with Yahweh. Yes. And I can understand I go into this realm because of righteousness. It brings me joy and it brings me peace. Those three has to be in it. But there has to be more than three. Because as I stand with Yeshua, I have to remind myself, I step into the Trinity, I step into that kingdom, I step into a dimensional realm where I do not want the shadow court, I don't want Satan to come in with any of his schemes or, exactly. or plans for me. I don't want the fake or fa false revelation or insight. I want the truth. So I step into Christ. Mm -hmm. That is my primary focus. I step into Christ. So I have to see the way and the truth in every encounter. I have to see righteousness, joy, peace in every encounter.
That's good. I have to understand that I'm stepping into that framework of the Yod Hey Vav Hey. That's why I breathe my breath into Yahweh. I breathe my breath into every aspect of who He is, all of who He is, surrounded by His glory and His fire. And that's when I go in. No other time. But we have to get to the point in our walk with Yahweh where that's a lifestyle. But yeah. I don't step in and out. You know, when I when I just started doing this, when I was just divided soul and spirit, it was an in and out, in and out. Yeah. I didn't understand that I can stay there, that my spirit man can multiply. But Ooh. now that I understand that I'm a multiplicator, I can multiply because I'm a more than more than a human being. When I step into the yes. spirit realm, yeah. there's no limitations. Yeah. Everything yes. can multiply. Matter of fact, I can be in multiple places and do multiple things at the same time. Yes. It's almost like Yahweh is just wanting us to understand that the engagement of what uh, the, the Father opens up for us, that which is available, is designed to train and equip you and to shift you into a greater revelational understanding of who He is, so you can have a greater understanding of who you are. Because at the end of the day, there's really two things that Yahweh is focusing on, I believe, in this year, is to have the sons of Yahweh understand who we are and understanding who He is. Yes. Because once we have those two fully um, mastered, life begins to change. That's when the supernatural activates inside of us and the crazy stuff begins to happen. You know, he says that we are to be signs and wonders. Yes. yes. That's yes. different than coming in with signs and wonders. Right. Now, I have no problem with signs and wonders. I love signs and wonders. But how about we are the signs and yes. wonders? I, I want to walk out of the mountain of Yahweh like Moses. Yes. Lion, ox, eagle, man. You know, they say there was... There was uh, uh, his face was changing. It was changing into different yes, faces, yes. horn like appearances. Right. Yes. And never mind that, he comes down from the mountain and smashes gold into powder, which means he was burning with fire. Yes. Mm. I know we don't understand this, but for, for gold to be turned into powder, it needs to burn at 10,000 degrees Celsius. Or I think it's 5,000 degrees Celsius and uh, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. That is a crazy amount. You have to burn this. So, so Moses come out of the mountain of God into the natural norm and he is freaking everybody out. He has become a sign and a wonder. Why? Because you become what you behold. Mm. Yeah. You say, well, you know, the Bible says there's four living creatures uh, around the throne all the time. Yeah, they became what they, what they, what they beheld. Wow. Ooh. Seven spirits, they engage the Father all their life. They become what they behold. Yes. If you understand what you will look like when you become what you behold, it's more than this. I know it's amazing, but it's more than this. As a matter of fact, in the spirit realm, there's no form. There's no limitation to what I present myself as. I don't have a time and a space. You know, I remember standing outside of the atmosphere of the earth with a bunch of angelic beings and we expanded. I expanded who I am uh, from six foot two to 1,500 feet. The standing over creation, looking at what creation had in store for it, it's looking into the future and seeing what the Father is about to do with sons that's opened and willing to move forward. Yes. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Yes. yes. You know, Yahweh is calling the people that understand what it means to to really shift in and have these plumb lines, not just for your protection, but also to understand that life and the truth of the fullness of the Father has to come from within Him. Yes. Mm. How are you guys doing? Yes. Now, because there's a lot of things that I've seen that I, I've never heard or read in the Bible. There's a lot of revelation that I speak of that a lot of people's never heard of or heard anybody teach. There's a lot of things that's happening in our faith right now that's not been documented in Scripture. Oh, well, then it's not God, brother. Well, I see, uh, yeah, sure, I made a statement that changes that. He said, you will do greater things exactly. than what I've done. Now, let me just explain something to you. First of all, if we start to do greater things that he's done, then what we are doing will not be recorded. Mm. And the same record says, to those who love me, how many of you understand that scripture? Mm -hmm. Nothing you've ever seen can compare. Nothing you've ever heard can compare. No, nothing you've even ever imagined can compare. Wow. So I've read it, I've seen it, I've heard it, I've looked at it, and he says, well, not even any of those things can compare to what's in store 
for those who love me. Exactly. So there's eons of dimensional revelation that's still to come into the hearts of these people. There's, there's places in the spirit, in the natural, in every other realm that we have to engage. Yes. We have to begin to understand who we are. We are not mere humans. Not. You know, why would a God tell these people to not to, to, to be reminded that we're aliens? I'm not saying you're a Mexican. Don't look at me with that tongue. Right? I'm an alien. Right? I'm South African. But the idea is that we have to realize we're not from this planet. You know, when I walk in the kingdom of heaven, and I, I know that this revelation came from, um, from the kingdom of heaven, but I know that it, it wasn't accepted by us. So it came through Hollywood and came through the, the, the wow. worldly system because oh. the things we see on TV, like like the, the whole Superman story. Yep. Are you joking me right now? Exactly. He comes from a different planet. Yeah. But on that planet, he was just a normal person because <laughs> everybody had that same power. Yeah. Then he comes to creation, comes into uh, into the earth, and he is a superior. He can fly. He can every everything that he is. Yeah. And creation is, is different. But on his planet, it was just normal. If I go to the kingdom of heaven, there's nothing different about me, although I can do things that I don't do in, in the earth. But Yahweh on the cross opened our gateways so that we can begin to understand who we are. Yes. That the limitations we have in creation is because we've been birthed into it, and that's now what we believe. Wow. It's not a reality, and it's not a truth. It's not. You know, they have proven scientifically that um, if you can operate at the speed of light, you operate outside of time and space, and you can go forward and backwards in time, and you will not age. Okay. Now, I don't even understand, we are light. We are light. So if I do this, I'm actually traveling at the speed of light. Because I am light. So whichever speed I'm going at, that's how fast speed is, or light is. I know we don't, that's not scientifically what it is, but if I am light, then I have to begin to understand that. So it's not something that I have to try and achieve by nine steps. It's something I have to begin to believe. Wow. When I was born into sin, I wasn't born with sin. I was born with the intention of sin to teach me everything it knows. Oh my God. And let me tell you something, missing the mark is the truth twisted. It's not a big fat lie. No one's going to come and tell you the grass is blue and you're going to go, yeah, yeah, yeah I guess that's kind of right. You're right. It's true. It's true. I guess. I mean, I guess if the grass is blue and not really green, no, there's going to have to be a hell of a lot more evidence for you to begin to believe that grass is green. Yahweh is really calling a people that will be willing to go deeper. Yes. Yes, Yahweh. We are going to experience things that's not in the Bible. Yes, thank you. This may seem really obvious, but it's a fact that not everything is actually specifically mentioned in the Bible. Hello. Can you believe it? Yeah. That an infinite God couldn't manage... <laughs> To put everything he's ever done and said and would ever do or say in one book. Aye, aye, aye. Hello. But we believe he did. Right. Mm. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to be rude, um, sir, but you're so stupid. Retarded. Yep. Mm -hmm. Go ahead now. <laughs> so I wasn't saying that to anybody. I was speaking to this guy was. standing right there in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like he, he's just looking for people that says yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. You know, it sounds like such a... But have you ever been around normal yes. church people? Oh, they are afraid God. of everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything intimidates them. Everything. Why? Because you don't know the truth. Exactly. Because you don't know who you are. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. But in the same breath, remind yourself that the younger you are and the less mature you are, the less you're going to know. Yeah. So what's your responsibility is to go as deep and as high and as wide as you can possibly go in Him. Right? For example, Yeshua said that we should do greater things than He did right. without being specific about what they might be. Wow. 
<laughs> we have experience in daily lives which are not uh, mentioned in the Bible. There are no computers, glasses, or cars, uh, or mobile phones. But is it okay for us to use them? Yes. Yep. And, ever, and no one ever comes up to me and says, Oh, it's unbiblical for you to use a cell phone. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> See, what, 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 what goes for one, what rule, what one, what one rule works for one, then it has to work for the others as well. Sure do. Yes, that's right. Sure do. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Right. Mm. You can't say to me, if it's not in, in the Word, it's not of God. Because God's bigger than the Word. Exactly. Now, I say this, but remind yourself, the Word is the belt. Mm. So the belt holds everything together. So we can't throw the book out. No, Lord, no. The book is part of the three. Yeah. So including all three, mm -hmm. you have the fullness. Mm -hmm. That's why the nine plumb lines put you in a position where you receive fullness. Yes. And you look at it, Holy Spirit three. Yeshua three. The Father three. Yes. Gustav three. <laughs> Body, soul, spirit. Now that is Whoa. three represents gimel, full supply. Whoa. And it's also the establishment of governance. That's right. So when I enter into an engagement with righteousness, joy, peace, I come in the Holy Spirit and I present a dimension of governance. Whoa. I enter in as the way, the truth, I, I step in full of the Father and I've got judgment and judge, justice and holiness. I step into a dimension of Hooray. governance. Yes. I operate body, soul, and spirit, and immediately there's a level of governance wow. that opens up. Yes. Glory. Yes. In just the same way, we may, we may have some experiences of heaven which are not in the Bible. Right. Mm. I've experienced some things that I haven't even spoken about yet. I know that Ian sometimes goes up to, to five years before he starts speaking about things that he's engaging now. You know, we have to understand that there's more than what we ever thought there were. More. There's an infinite God that's looking for a people that is infinite. Infinite. You know, we don't understand eternity because we, we don't understand that we're eternal beings. Mm. And I say this because in reality I've seen people born and I've seen people die. I've never seen a 500 year old man. I've heard of them in the spirit realm, but never physically saw any of them. Mm -hmm. Not yet. You know, in our own natural capacity, we can't think over 120 years old. The Bible says so. Man will not live over a certain amount of years. But see, what we don't understand, is if the Christ fulfilled everything on the cross, then there's certain curses. As a matter of fact, all of the Old Testament is completely and utterly set into full pace in Christ. Because if the original intention was not, uh, was ten commandments, and in Christ there's only three, right. then we have to see how it changes. Wow. Mm. Because in, in the beginning, for me to truly sit before Him and express the covenant of our marriage, He gave me ten pieces of a contract that I needed to submit to. Now, I've said this to you before, your responsibility is to sit with him and um, present your contract to him. What do you need? Right. And, the new, and of course, in, at, 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 at that time, the Israelites said, no, we will not. Wow. wow. And then at their Pentecost, they said, yes. But, uh, something just changed. Because their commandments shifted. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The one comes before the other. I can't love my neighbor if I don't love myself. I can't love myself if I don't love the Father. You guys okay? Right. The scriptures can be a plumb line for us, so it is important to engage it. Yes. You know, if I'm in a place in the Spirit and I know the scripture, and the place that I'm at is completely uh, 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 out of scriptural balance, then I step out. We, how many of you understand this? We are not really stupid. We're not. Matter of fact, we are incredibly intelligent beings. Great. And you know, although scientists have told us that we only use between 5 and 7% of our brains, listen to me, when you've activated your spirit man, 
and all three of who you are is in full working order, you're instantly starting to use more than 10% of your brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I say this, and you might say, well, that's not real. Have you ever seen the movie Lulu? Is it Lulu? Lucy. Mm -hmm. uh, in this movie, they go through a process scientifically proving to you what it would be like for a human being to uh, use more than 7% of his brain. Mm -hmm. And it's just the process of how she evolves into this god. A god, literally. Exactly. And it's, I know it's just a movie, don't, 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 don't preach off of that type of stuff, brother. <laughs> but I've engaged the Father, and He has showed me what it looks like when we begin to operate in the full measure of who we are. Yeah. Why would a God, now you have to understand something, my physical is 99% of who I am. My spiritual is only 1% of who I am. This is in the natural norm of our understanding. Look out there. Walk out there, even go to some churches, that's what you'll see. Yeah. Everything is physical, everything is natural, everything is what you see. There is nothing outside of the supernatural norm. None. So yes, I understand the 5% of the brain is being used there. But when you've activated who you are as a spirit man, and you're engaging in all dimensions of truth, and the Father is beginning to pour into you, and we're beginning to believe different. Let me tell you something, everything new you believe adds a percentage to your brain capacity. That's good. Because Yahweh is talking about dimensional realms that he shifts into. He's talking about things that he Yeshua did in the Word that looks like somebody that uses more than 7% uh, of his brain. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's think about it. Let's think about it. He uh, talks to his disciples and he says, Oh, when you were lying by the tree, he wasn't near him. He could see all that. He's walking on water. He's appearing and disappearing. He's walking through people. He's shifting who he is into his spirit and no one can see him. He hides himself in himself. This is why he was walking on the face of the earth. He changes his looks while people are right next to him. They don't recognize him. He doesn't look the same as his disciples. They've spent three years with him. They slept in the sa on the same spot next to him for three years. They don't know who he is because he looks different. Everything about him is using more than 7% of his brain. Come on, man. You know, the supernatural opens up a dimension to us. You know, there's African cultures where the muti and the, the witchcraft is so strong that they're changing into animals. Mm -hmm. I had a testimony of Grant, uh, Grant and Samantha talking about some of the things they experienced in, in, in Africa. They were in a tent and there was a hyena scratching outside. And when they opened to see what it was, it ran off and turned into a human being. Oh my! Awesome. Have you ever heard the the, the um, prayer Saint Saint Patrick, uh, the, the deer's cry? No. Now, if you read um, Justin's book, he talks about this. And what really happens is that uh, Saint Patrick would change when the king's men come out to find him because they want to kill him. <laughs> And he, he sees them or he hears them, he would turn into a, a deer. And his men would turn into thorns. Thorns, thorns, I don't know how you say it. Thorns, eh? Thorns. Thorns. Yeah. Thorns. Yeah. And they would walk right by the king's men and they wouldn't know. And when they passed enough, they would turn back into humans. Now we can't understand this because it's not natural for us to think like that. But it's because Yahweh is calling a people that will grow out of the natural. Yes. That will begin to make what we have opened up to as a lifestyle. Right. You know, I, that's one encounter I was talking about. Let me tell you, over the, next, over the last 10 years, I've had thousands of encounters. Yes. There's so many gateways, so many doorways. I mean, I have no reason not to be in the right through. Every encounter, every vision I've ever had in my life has now become a gateway for me to go in. Because I look at it, I see the nine plumb lumps I enter in, and from there I get to go into every different area within my father's kingdom, do all kinds of things that needs to be done, that has to be done. Yeah. A plumb line is a string that leads a weight or a plumb bob and we're hanging from it. If you know what I mean, you know what a plumb line is? A little rope with a metal piece of uh, steel at the bottom of the point. And you hang it straight down from where you want that point to stop. Oh. And it keeps everything 100% aligned. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right? That's what the plumb line is. It's to keep you 100% aligned. That's right. 
Now, first of all, I enter into Christ, who is the truth. And that's where that dimension of the word comes in, the way, the truth, and the light. But I'm going to also understand, I can't be in Christ without being in the Holy Spirit. Also, I can't be in the Holy Spirit and in Christ without being in the Father. So, automatically, when I engage in my Father and in the full measure of His kingdom, all nine plumb lines has to be there. I have to have righteousness, joy, and peace. I have to have the way, the truth, and the life. I have to have judgment, judgment, and holiness. Yes. All of it. So does our experience line up with God's principles, His character, and His nature? That's what these plumb lines represent. Yes. Who is it? Now you have to understand something. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reel on Facebook, and I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it says... This is what we think angels look like, you know, and then it, it shows what they really look like. And it's a little bit freaky. Well, let's think about it. Uh, in front of his throne, you've got four living beings with the head of an ox, the head of a lion, the head of a man, the head of an eagle, with wings that has eyes in it, feet that is like that of a ox with Partly, it's deformed. It's demonic. It looks freaky. You look at me. If you have to see that in the spirit, you're going to bind it. <laughs> because our image <coughs> of that realm is all beauty. So let me tell you, if you've ever seen a demon, they're ugly. Right? They're ugly. They're not pretty. They don't look cute. Oh, cutie boy! Look at you, cutie, cutie, cutie monkey. No, they're ugly. They, 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 they're distorted. They're broken. Distorted. Okay. They have no light. They have no glory. No. They don't have what they previously had. Now, you have to understand, we look at the four living creatures with eyes and their wings, and their face, turning lion, ox, eagle, man. They have hooves. They have weird. Without no light, without no glory, without no life in it, that's demonic. So we have to begin to look at what's available out there without the view and perception of everything's demonic. I remember being in a house with a friend of mine. We lived there when we just moved into uh, America. And I used to, used to see a little girl in the spirit around the house. And everyone saw it. And I say everyone, myself and the, the, two, the two other people that was there with me. And all they could think of what is demonic is demonic. And should I said, well, actually, engage it is not demonic, it's an angelic being. Mm. Because I don't understand, everything is not demonic. Exactly. <laughs> and a matter of fact, the less attention I give to the demonic, and the more attention I give to the angelic, the more of the angelic I'm going to engage. Exactly. Because my breath, uh, I, I say this and I want to remind you, that Yahweh breathed his breath into me and I became a living soul. Okay? Remind yourself of this. It is the breath that frames. And so he says, let us... Sorry, he brings the animals to Adam and he says, name them. Have that in mind. Then he creates the, 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 the woman and he says to Adam, name him. Name her, right? You guys know this is in scripture. Then he says to his disciples, pray in my name. And the natural Greek perception of this is he went donkey. Well, he must have gone donkey ass. Because they both look exactly the same to me, but one's a donkey and one's an ass. I don't really know exactly how that goes. You know, elephant, cat, rat. But we're beginning to understand, no, that's not how it works. That's not what he was doing. He was taking his breath and breathing life into them. And that's what it means. To name something, because in the breathing of your breath is where the power that frames life is in. That's why I always say, let there be light. I want you to understand something, because he's calling a company of people that will begin to understand. When he said to Adam, um, name these animals, Adam gave life to them. Yes. When he told Adam to give uh, Eve uh, uh, her name, he gave life to her. But that's why God gave life to her. No, God gave life to mankind, which was Adam. And he gave him the power 
to breathe that same breath in his image and likeness to form life. That's why James goes as far as to say, watch what you say. He wasn't talking to your normal average guy on the street. He was talking to sons and daughters of Yahweh full with the Spirit of God. Yes. But when you have the breath of God, what you speak will be framed. That's why we watch what we say. So if I am surrounded by the demonic and I go, I bind you, Spirit of this dude and that dude, and I find creative ways to create new demons, because that's what we've been taught to do, then all I'm really doing is I'm breathing my breath into an atmosphere where they need my breath to live. Because in my breath is life, in my breath is the kingdom of heaven, in my breath is the image and the full measure of who Yahweh is. Outside of my breath, the one who governs creation, they do not have life. Wow. So the tactic of the devil is to irritate, frustrate you so much that you want to speak to him. Wow. Listen to me, that's exactly what happened to Eve. She was annoyed by him. Eventually she had to talk back. But we're beginning to understand. Well, see, um, the only way I might talk to you is with my lawyer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so when I hear an accusation, what my job is no longer to bind and rebuke the enemy because I don't want to frame, uh, I don't want to frame a, a, a breast for him to live in. But see, this comes out of another place because we realize how powerful we are. To realize the fire that Yahweh has breathed into our being is more than just what they told us. It is a power, it is a fire, and it's a dimension of creation that comes out of me. What I speak as a son is framed and formed. That's why it says, watch what you say, watch how you say it. I am. Become that. Watch what you create. How are you guys doing? Using your imagination, now I know that this is a point that we have run away from for many years. Mm. But this is one of the most important things, because the imagination is your third eye. Yes! Now, oh. and yeah, you go, um, third eye, new age, okay, I'm out. <laughs> nope. I want to just quickly remind you that nothing out there belongs to anyone other than nothing. me and you. There's no other religion. None. There's no other God. Now Paul even says this, and he makes it almost very clear. He says, you know, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians he talks about... Corinthians. I think it's Corinthians. He, he talks about don't sacrifice food to gods, don't do this, don't do that. You know, be, be careful. There's young ones that don't always know. You don't want to make them stumble or fall. And then right at the end he says, but just remind yourself there's no other gods. Mm. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. There is none. There is no other gods. If there is, if we, you truly believe there is no other gods, then there can only be a lie and a truth. And if I hear a lie, I know what the truth should be. Yes. And if I hear the lie, and I don't want to accept that lie, I am losing out on a truth. And I say this because there is no lie only. A lie has to come from a truth. Yes. So if I hear something that, that doesn't sound right, then I can align it. Because something could be phenomenal and powerful, but come from Satanism. Or something could be powerful and intensely true, but it comes from the New Age group. Wow. And we reject it and we say, well, that's not God. Well, yes, it is. Because it's still a truth. Might be wrapped up in something we don't want, but we are the light. I am the light of the full measure of who He is. I'm in Christ, by Christ, through Christ, with Christ, because of Christ. <laughs> he loves that I love and move and I have my being in him. He loves and moves and as he's being in me, we are one. He's my, he's my head, I'm the body. We have to begin to understand the difference between what they told us we are and what we really truly are. Right. Yes. yes. The scriptures can become our string point, our starting point for future experiences. You know, you have to remind yourself that your imagination is inward sight. And I've said this many times, it is always your spirit trying to show you what is engaged through the day. So you have to take the train of thought that's coming in through pictures and put them together to make a picture. And of course, you will only grab and hold on to what you can perceive. Yeah. Only what your natural capacity of understanding can hold on to is going to become a reality to you. So if I see a tree and I see a mountain and I see flowers and I see a beautiful field and I see horses and I see eagles and I see uh, this beautiful nature scene, I can grasp all of it because it's in my natural capacity. But if I begin to see um, 
the four living creatures and angelic beings and I see people flying and I see all these beings creating things and I see all this crazy stuff that happens in the heavens, it's difficult for me to frame it. That's why it's important to go back and read the Word. Because a lot of what's in Ephesians and in, in Ezekiel and in Revelation is, is spirit dimensions that you can tap into as gates. But then you have other books that's not in the Bible that we have the capacity to engage. Enoch. All these books that's out there, engage it, read it. So it frames a picture for you to hold on to so that when you see it, you can slowly begin to believe it. Yes. And of course, I can have a natural encounter where there's trees and mountains and go into that. When I get there, there's other dimensional pictures that I don't understand or perceive in the natural. I come back out and I didn't see any of it. I knew there was other things that I didn't know what it was. But every time I go back in, I don't have to perceive with my previous perception. I can go in there and I can look at what I'm now seeing that I previously couldn't understand. Yes. Because I don't have to go in there trying to perceive. I go in there knowing that there's things I can't see and I need to be able to frame it. Yes. And that's why we go back in and in and in as often as we can. That's why your imagination is your third eye and it's the importance that you have to begin to focus on. Because once your imagination is reactivated in its full measure, you can see. Because my spirit can see 100%. But the reason my soul is not engaging what my spirit is showing it is because it has no record for it. It cannot see. It hasn't activated its imagination. All my life as a soul, I've been told that that's not right. Shut your imagination down. Stop making that stuff. You can't do that. I realize there's a big difference between fantasy and um, imagination. Imagination is literally what I'm seeing on the inside of me because it's a reflection of what my spirit is doing. We ought not to be scared to use our imagination. Yahweh has given it uh, to us so that we can see things, picture them, and visualize them. Mm. Now some Christians are wary of concepts like visualization because they have been uh, adopted by New Age and occult uh, people. Right. Listen to that statement. It's been adopted. It doesn't belong to them. It does not. Uh, nothing belongs to anybody out there except me. Hello. I don't care who you are. If you got something I want, it's mine. Exactly. Why? Because I've got dominion on this planet. I'm a three strand being. If you're not born again and on fire for my God, then whatever you have, I can have. Exactly. I can take. It's not yours. It is a, it is a uh, truth that is wrapped up in vomit, and I have the power to clean it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hello. You, can do that. you guys understand? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Come on now. Even meditation is viewed with uh, suspicion in some circles. The word mystic. Oh my goodness, people are so retarded. Yeah, retarded. You can't talk about mysticism in church. You just church and... Mystic goes together. Yeah. Don't talk about a God you can't see. You speak to a God or pray to God or engage with a God you can't see and say you're not a mystic. Yeah. That in itself is what it means. Mm. <coughs> Magic. Yeah. The three men. <laughs> the three shepherds that we believe, or the, the Magi, whatever, they were magicians. That gave Jesus his, his, uh, his three gifts. They were magicians. Magi. You know, there's a lot of things that we have made non-Christian that we have to begin to change in our hearts. Mm. You know, I've shut so many people out of my life because of this belief. Yes. I've ran away from so many things because of this belief. Wow. Mm. And Yahweh said to me, it's not a truth. Mm -hmm. Because he created it for me, he gave it to me, and it's always been mine. How are you guys doing? Good. Hello. Have you ever just sat down and listened to the creating, creative story? What it's all about? It's about me and you. It's all about us. Right. It's about us worshipping him. That's the only reason he did it, that it's not about... Other gods, it's not about all kinds of other things, it's not about salvation, it's not about revelation, it's not about nothing, it's about worshipping Him. 
It's about stepping into him. And in that place is where you get to understand him and know him and believe in him. It's in him that the word is. It's in him that the truth is. When I'm in him, I'm a truth seeker. And when I hear something that sounds like the truth, but it's not in my face, and it has a twist in it, I'm a seeker of truths. I want to take that statement, take that revelation, and turn it back into its original thoughts. Yes. I mean, that's who we are. We have to do it. Yes, we have to. We have to understand that these things are not wrong in itself. It is simply that we have to approach them afresh and learn how to use them in a godly way. Right. Doorways. Now, in my life, I have made everything a doorway. If you sneeze, it's a doorway for me to go into the heaven. I mean. <laughs> Not really. If we read Revelations chapter 4 and 5, they tell us about the Yahweh's throne, thunder and lightning, the seven spirits of Yahweh, four living creatures, angels, 24 hours and so on. Of 24 hours. 24 elders and so on. Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10 speaks of a similar scene. There are pictures in these passages which we can visualize. Yes. And, and this then becomes something um, to, uh, that we can engage with. Yep. It opens up. That's what the word is. It's your gate. That's right. yeah. You know, I, I, I remember at the beginning I would read some scriptures and I would think to myself, I'm sure that at that point that that was written, there were some other things happening too. Right. Because I'm going to understand Gospel, the four Gospels is a de depiction of 26 days mm -hmm. of the three years of Yeshua's life. Right. It's not the full three years. That's why he said, well, you see, you, you, I couldn't even write down everything I've done. Right. Because they were full of the books in the libraries of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a 24-hour, 24-7 miracle life mm -hmm. that he lived as a son. And when I read the Bible and it says there's something in it that, that, that makes me feel there should be more, I now have the capacity as a spirit being to go into that realm where it was spoken and given outside of time and space to see the rest of the information. Yes, yes. And I know that people we think, oh, well, how do you think that's going to be true? How do you believe that that could be a real truth? If you can't see it and study it, it's probably not going to be true. There's going to be deception in it. Well, I am in Christ. I'm a mature Christian. I have shifted from the natural, from this side of the veil, into Him. I live and move and have my being in Him. I'm not afraid of new revelation. I'm not afraid to say, well, I believe different. I believe this is what the Father said. Well, because I've engaged different realms. Now, I say, I, 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 please, I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about this is what Yahweh has opened up for us to go do. Yeah. Engage it to a deeper place. Yes. An anchor. As well as a doorway, the scripture can be an anchor for further heavenly experiences. I've had many encounters with Yahweh in the heavenly realms, following, with, uh, following which uh, I um, went back to the Bible to find a foundation um, and an anchor for those experiences. Now, that's not always possible, but if you know the scripture, I have, I've never engaged anything that wasn't some way, fashion, or form in scripture for me. You know, I might have done some things and I've seen some things and experienced some things that I could never find reading in the Bible, but there's similar things and might not, not be 100% the same, but there's a similarity. You know, Paul says, I went into the kingdom of heaven and it was, uh, there were things I experienced that was unlawful for me to utter. Right? You have to understand something. It wasn't like God told him he's not allowed to speak of it. He didn't have the framework for it. He saw and experienced things in the kingdom of heaven that he couldn't explain. So my responsibility is to go in and whether I can explain it or not. To trust the experience, to trust my covenant, my relationship with Him. To go deeper on purpose and to love and praise and worship on Him as He ought, as He's desiring me to do it. Yes. It's important to find yourself soaking. It's important to find yourself constantly meditating, using your imagination, getting yourself into a place where you deep, deep in the heart of God. Remind yourself that He has opened up who you are um, through the blood of Yeshua. He has shifted you in to your spirit place. He's given you plumb lines, doorways, and anchors. He's given you uh, places, dimensions, and realms. He's given you the light, the life, and the full measure. He's given you everything you need 
to become what you're supposed to be. And a matter of fact, we need to begin to understand that it is our responsibility as these students to grow and to shift and to mature. You know, these meetings are, are, are not church meetings. I don't, I don't, I don't prophesy over you. I'm not trying to make you feel better. I'm not trying to, to oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. You just keep being a good boy. You know, it's not my job. You know, it, it, I'm not going to feed you with a spoon. If you're not listening or paying attention, uh, if you're not doing the things that needs to be done, then it's none of my business. I'm not your pastor. I'm not going to be on your back about it. I'm not going to, you're a mature son. That's what these meetings are. You are a mature son. You come in here. I teach something you've never heard. I present something to you. Your responsibility is to trade financially into it and then go engage it. Engage it for that week over and over and over again. Listen to it on Facebook. Listen to it on YouTube. Go into it. Engage it. Let the gate that I present to you be a way for you into a place you've never been. How are you guys doing? Yes. You know, the Father is looking for a people that will shift who they are, and come into a deeper place. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Hebrews 5.14 It only comes by practice, guys. This is not one of those, it's just going to happen for you, if someone preached it, someone teach it, no, you have to go practice. You have to go take your imagination, activate it. Go into what your spirit's showing you daily. Grow, shift, mature. Believe the things you see. Don't try and interpret it through the old school. Don't do anything through your old school. If what you're engaging takes you on a path where you have to do the things that you did in your previous age, step out. Yeah. Step out. It's a mindset. That's not what it's for. You do not need an interpretation. You need to go back into that encounter over and over and over again until the Father has spoken to you what He needs to speak to you. You do not need a prophet. You do not need a man. The things that I teach should be confirmation. Right. Because you should have engaged it for yourself. Now your spirit is all-knowing. And I remember the first time I heard this, my spirit was the one telling my soul to shut you the hell up my soul, my spirit was the one that listened to the that had bound my soul and my body so that I couldn't move, but I had to listen to what was being said. Because it was so far out of my soul's view and so far out of my body's understanding, but my spirit knew it. Yeah. So practice, practice, practice. Yes. Father, so we want to come before your throne tonight and I want to ask you to take everyone in this room on a journey. I know that we've, we've touched on so many of these things already over the years, Lord, but there's so much that we need to remind ourselves of. There's so much that we have to go back into. There's so much that we have to do again and again and again and again. Practice, practice. Go over it again. Engage it. Shift. Go higher, deeper, wider. Search. Let's, uh, as kings, let's begin to truly search out what is in there for us and what you've opened up for. I ask that you'll take everyone in this room on a new pla to a new place in the kingdom. Shift us in our authority and power. Let's understand the responsibility we have in your name and in your full measure. And I ask, Father, that you will take everyone in this room on, on Facebook and YouTube on a journey to go to places and to receive revelation and insight and begin to function in new responsibilities within your kingdom and in creation to a level that we've never been at. Let the sons begin to rise up into its full place and position so we can restore creation and take back our authority. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.